We're getting ready for the third race this weekend for Historic Formula Ford at Cadwell Park. This will be the heat for round four of the championship. 81, Neil Fowler Motorsport, James Lovett will go off from pole position with the race winner of this heat going through to the championship race later on this afternoon. 22, that's Tim Bryce. Here go off alongside the Lola of Lovett, it's a Merling for Bryce making his return to racing this season in the Historic Formula 4 Championship. There's Louis Hangel, he races the 47 Alden, so that's three different types of Formula Ford in the top three places. Championship Chairman Andrew Mansell will go off fourth, hitting a Merlin, a Mark 11, slightly older spec car with the car of Tim Bryce on the front row. There's Harvey Sykes, here go off from fifth position, he's in a Crosley. Then we've got the Palliser of Chris Sharples, the former HSCC chairman. Classic team Merlins, Jeff Underwood, he starts seventh. Merlin's certainly the most used car in this series, but there is a good range of vehicles as you can see. 55, that's Roger Arnold, and then alongside him you can see is 46, and that's a Cooper, and that is Stuart Dix. Both drivers, long-term stewards of the championship. Then we've got Chris Gray's Lotus, yet another make in this race, and alongside him will be 28 Mike Wales. Alongside him in the collecting area, 26, and that is John Slack. So let's take a look at how the grid will line up for this heat. James Lovett and Tim Bryce on the front row. Row two, Louis Handel and Andrew Mansell. Harvey Sykes and Chris Sharp who's making it five makes a card in the top six. And we've got all Merlin row four, Jeff Underwood and Roger Arnold. Stuart Dick and Cliff Gray are next up ahead of Mike Wales and John Slack. And we've got Philip Walker and Lee Penson, John Roberts and Stephen Greenwood, John Emery, Donald Laird, Alan Cook and Dick Dixon, the expected 20 cars. Well, Dixon is somebody not there. He got damaged from the earlier incident from yesterday but the race gets underway 20 minutes of action here at the fantastic Cadwell Park circuit and it's James Lovett from pole position that leads in towards Coppice with Tim Bryce chasing Andrew Mansell looking down the inside couldn't make that work though as they flow through the corner and then they climb the hill up towards Charlie's the double apex right hander see how picturesque this race track is the track in the middle of a load of greenery and we can ride on board with car 50 this is John Roberts we're climbing the hill up towards Park Corner defending the inside is someone going to try and come round the outside we wonder we now turn through the right hander at Park now on to Chris Kirby yes round the outside that's Stephen Greenwood in the BT Great start from him then, and a great move there around the outside at Park Corner. Off towards the gooseneck they go. The right and the left, and they plummet down the hill towards Mansfield. And then the leaders are already at the mountain, and it's absolutely together up front as James Lovett's under lots of pressure from Tim Bryce. And the battle in the main pack certainly is on. It's now Greenwood looking down the inside of Mike Wales. Let's ride on board with Roberts over the top of the mountain. Is anyone going to go for a move in towards Hall Bed? Well, Wales there defending his line, but he has got a car just up ahead, so he's attacking as well as defending. Difficult place to be, of course. Having to do two, look in your, keep an eye on your mirrors of the car behind, as well as trying to pass. And I think that's Philip Walker, who Wales is behind again. He's looking to the inside, up towards Barn Corner. Potential of compromising your line up onto the start and finish straight, but I think Wales has kept good speed through the corner there, not to be too defensive up towards turn one. Lovett continues to lead with Bryce and Mansell chasing. It's a three-way dice up front. Then it's Handel, Sykes, Sharples and Underwood up next. A gap back to Stuart Dixon eighth. He's ahead of Roger Arnold and Cliff Gray and then John Slack. Then there's another gap back to Greenwood who's now got ahead of both Walker and Wales and Alan Cook there trying to pass up towards Chris Curve. Leaders over the mountain once more. Lap two best is on, be a 12 or 13 lap race we suspect. Mike Wales over the cement dust from a uh, oil that was laid in an earlier race, run out wide there, so John Roberts up on the inside down towards the mountain, meanwhile into the paddock and out of the race, that's the Cooper Chinook of uh, Stuart Dick, so he's out of this one. 
up towards Coppice Corner. We can ride on board with the Neil Fowler Motorsport car of James Lovett. Bit of extra telemetry as well on his car, but we can keep an eye on down in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, but he's got to keep an eye on behind because Tim Bride is chasing. Up towards Park Corner we go. Hard on the brakes here. And down the inside, there was just a Formula Ford car whip to go through, and Tim Bride has taken that opportunity to take the race lead. Not much room around this circuit to pass, but Tim Bride utilising what he had there. No um, over necessary defended from James Love. It allowed that to happen. Looking further back, there's Roger Arnold. He's at the eighth now with the Cooper Chinook of uh, Stuart Dix out of the race. Then you've got the John Slack ahead there of Cliff Gray. Now this is the battle of the race, though, isn't it? Philip Walker leading a five-car tussle. Great stuff. That's a good battle too. Three-way dice for fifth position, being led by Harvey Sykes over the top of the mountain. Then you've got Roger Arnold, who's having a lowly at the race at the moment in eighth. Then you've got John Slack, Cliff Gray and Stephen Greenwood, that three-car battle for ninth position. Then Philip Walker leading this dice for twelfth that I mentioned. With Donald Laird's Elden at the rear of it. Back to the leaders though. James Lovett will be looking to re-challenge Tim Bride down the park straight where he could use the slipstream very well. It's a good run out of Charlie draw, love it. So the Lola driver now getting closer and closer to Bride. Bride though defending the inside lines, I love it. Squeezing his way up on the outside. But he backs off and tucks back underneath the race leader. It's a long race. Still a good quarter, uh, three quarters of it to go. So no need for any hard attacks at this point. There's the leader then in towards the goose deck for 22 Bride. See Andrew Mansell in there as well. So it's a free car battle for the lead. A bit further back, John Roberts we can ride on board with. It's very late on the brakes in the park corner. He's gone down the inside of Philip Walker. What a great move that was. He came from a long way back. Walker wouldn't have been expecting that, but he got through. There's the top three then. Now being chased by Louis Handel, who's get it, definitely getting away from the fifth place tussle. So can he go after the top three who are battling at the moment? John Slack and Stephen Greenwood, so Cliff Gray's dropped back in that three-way tussle. And then you've got John Roberts, who's now started to pull away from Philip Walker. That's a good battle. Alan Cook and Donald Laird absolutely knows the tail. The Mallock and the Elder. Both, I believe, having their first season in the championship. There's our top three then. If Louis Handel's Elder tries to get closer to that three car dice. We look back, there's the eighth place car of Roger Arnold. Who with um, his mate Stuart Dix out of the race. They're unable to have that, that battle that I'm sure they were looking forward to. Mike Wales now ahead of Philip Walker in that battle bit for back. There's the Elden of Donald Laird. Leaders into the mountain. Harvey Stites, Chris Sharples, and Jeff Underwood. That's Crosley, Pallister, and uh, Merlin all having a nice battle. Through the hairpin up towards Barn Corner. The leaders are absolutely no to tail. James Lovett on the gearbox of race leader. Tim Bryce and he is certainly within slipstream and distance headed up towards Coppice Corner. Bryce sitting his tie in the middle of the track. I mean, there's very limited room for Lovett to go through. He looks to the outside, then to the inside, and then tucks back underneath him. They go through the very quick left hander at Coppice. And the short run through the into the right hander at Charlie's and over the brow into the second part of Charlie's. Bright right up against the white line, slides a bit wide. Lovett carries speed out of the corner, so he's getting closer and closer. To Bride, Bride defended again, so Lovett goes to the outside. Can he draw up alongside here? No straight line speed difference between the two cars, so that means Bride is able to stay ahead. They turn into Park Corner. Lovett out almost over the grass there, so that should allow Bride just to give himself a bit more of a comfortable gap.
John Roberts continue his charge up the field. He's gained a good number of places already and now he's closing up towards the Lotus of Cliff Gray. They turn now through this long right hander at Chris Curve that seems to go on forever. But eventually you do find yourself at the gooseneck. Gray out wide there, so Roberts can carry the speed fantastically through the corner. So now as they go dive downhill into Mansfield, he's up on the inside and he will gain the position. Another great move there from our onboard camera driver. There's Stephen Greenwood up ahead of John Slack now in the battle. I think that's for ninth position. So it's 11th for John Roberts now ahead of Cliff Gray. They've got Mike Wales, Philip Walker, Alan Cook and Donald Laird in there. That's a six car train. Fantastic stuff. John Emery, car 31, is soon to be lapped by a leading quartet now because the Eldon of Louis Handel has caught our leading trio. Now what can we do to make a way past we wonder? Well Chris Sharples has made a way past Harvey Sykes so he's up to 5th place now. So he will leave Sykes to battle with Jeff Underwood. Now what can Stephen Greenwood do about the 8th place car of Roger Arnold we wonder? Greenwood another driver who's come through the pack well in this race. Philip Walker and Alan Cook close together there. And the leaders are in traffic into the mountains. This is an awkward place to catch a slower car. How many of them can get past in towards Hall Bend? Leading two have Andrew Mance has been stuck behind though. And really you want to sit all the way back through this section of corner. So that's bad time in there for Andrew Mansell and for Louis Handel. Back on board we are with James Lovett turning through Barn Corner. On to the straight, the start and finish straight. And across the line for James Lovett. As he continues to see if he can find a way past Tim Roy through the 100 mile per hour coppice corner. Of course, slowing the car down into Charlie. Second part of Charlie is a crucial place to. Uh, get a good exit and James Lovett has just done that hasn't he absolutely perfectly so now he's pulling up alongside Tim Bryce we're climbing the hill now up towards Park Corner Bryce has got the inside line the cars are pretty much level but Lovett earlier on the brakes it would seem but then he's going to try and get the cut back but Bryce has got the car turned through the corner well so no way through for Lovett and he's been a great scrap hasn't it between the two of them and that lap that where Bryce was able to get up the inside early on it's proven at this point to be pretty critical. Down the hill, in towards Mansfield. Love it, it has a bit of oversteer through there. Gets the car sideways. He's carried the speed well down towards the mountain. But Bryce is continuing to be ahead and Andrew Mansell is back with them after being caught up in the lap three, Louis Handel not been able to do so and now Chris Sharples and Harvey Sykes are going after him Donald Laird there we can see he's got ahead of the Malloch of Alan Cook meanwhile Stephen Greenwood has caught Roger Arnold Arnold makes a bit of a mistake through the mountain but he manages to defend before heading up towards Hall Bend so he continues to run in eight but that's going to be a battle to the end I would think now John Slack seeming to drop back into the clutches of Roberts and Wales as they head over the mountain. Then we've got Cliff Gray up next, head of Philip Walker. Then the lap car of John Emery, so Rod Donald Laird has got to get ahead of him. Blue flags are outwaved by the marshals here. And John Slack down into the hairpin. He's got John Roberts flapping over the curbs, chasing him and arm out the cockpit for Slack. So obviously an issue there with his car. So John Roberts slips down the inside to go into the top 10. Andrew Mansell there, looking up on the inside, you can see just the corner of your screen to try and make a move on James Lovick, unable to do so at the moment. There's Jeff Underwood who's starting to have a slightly lonely race, he's in P7. The crowd staying in the shade here as it's absolutely baking at Cadwell Park. Hot work for the drivers of course, but they're having a great battle aren't they, the top six pretty much all together. And now oh, Stephen Greenwood is going past Roger Arnold, so let's change for eighth. What about it? The battle of a tenth? We're on board of John Roberts, but down the inside goes Mike Wales, but he runs wide. 
getting the cut back is Jordan Roberts. We read that well as Wild went down the inside. He played that bit earlier, let him slide out wide and then get back underneath him. Here's the Greenwood and Arnold battle, clattering the sausage dog curbs there with the 67 car. Leaders are still together still as they now turn to the right hander at Charlie. Slightly different lines from Brian and Lovett, but they've both got pretty much the same effect coming out of the corner. But then the slick team will work for Lovett, so the Lola will get closer to the Merlin. The Merlin driver sitting on the line to defend. So Lovett aim able to challenge. He's right there though, isn't he? But hasn't quite turned in as early as he might want it to there. So Brian pulls out a car length on corner exit. up towards the gooseneck they will go with a slightly bigger gap for Bryce but Lovett uses all the curve heading through there try and get that gap back down once more and the car gets very sideways through Mansfield as Philip Walker goes into retirement the car number 25 Hitting the curve hard once more with Greenwood and that's not allowed him to get a good exit so Roger Arnold pounces up on the inside in towards Hall Benz not a a regular overtaking spot but he managed to make that work well meanwhile again Mike Wales goes up the inside into Park Court he got the car turned in nice and early that time and he learned from what happened the earlier lap to stay ahead of John Roberts Roberts was planning to do the same re-attack out of the corner but car 28 Mike Wales had that one covered but he makes a small mistake through the gooseneck so Roberts will get closer but he has that defended again does Mike Wiles up on the inside towards Mansfield and again John Roberts tries to get the better exit the run down towards the mountain but once more Mike Wales has that one covered down into the mountain they turn and Roberts has got a good run this time up over the grass he is as well as tries to defend his line but on the inside John Roberts will go through he clipped one of the corner markers there he runs a bit wide through the middle of Hall Benz but he gathers that back up and he continues to run in that place that is a fantastic dice between the two of them though as is this for the race lead good we have our leading six in one long train so that's Tim Bryce leading the six Formula Ford cars up front Jeff Underwood eager to get amongst them but just a little bit far, too far back I would suggest so it's Bryce, Lovett, Mansell, Handel, Sykes and Sharples over the top of the mountains that has been a change I believe between Sykes and Sharples recently up off towards Hall Benz they go what about the Roberts and Wales battle it's Roberts defending to the inside but he goes in deep he goes over the curb the car gets sideways and it's Mike Wales he able to go down the inside he is he gets that position back the two cars run almost side by side through Chris Kerr for the final time out of Barn Corner it's going to be Tim Bryce that takes the victory so he will proceed to the championship race later on today James Lovett takes second the championship chairman Andrew Mansell in third what about this battle that is intrigued us right race long Mike Wales against John Roberts Roberts tries to get the run over the top of the mountain he looks to the outside in towards Hall Bend and just behind we've got Cliff Gray and Donald Laird now that are nose to tail as they head over the top of the mountain and there is John Slack who's clearly had issues in the second part of this race let's take a look at that race result it was a excited battles all the way through the field and it was Tim Bryce that came out on top in his Merlin ahead of James Lovett and Andrew Mansell third Louis Handel and Harley Sykes completed the top five the five of them separated by just two seconds a fantastically close race on this difficult circuit Chris Sharples was in six so a change between Sykes and Sharples uh, towards the end there as we mentioned Jeff Underwood was seventh ahead of Stephen Greenwood Roger Arnold beat Mike Wales who narrowly beat John Roberts after that nice tussle Cliff Gray, Donald Laird, John Slack and John Emery completed the 15 finishes and there is your race winner Tim Bryce only his third meeting back to racing James Lovett and Andrew Mansell concluded the top three and then Louis Handel, Harley Sykes and Chris Sharples that six car dice we had to the flag Jeff Underwood who had a slightly lonely second part of the race in the classic team Merlin machine the team uh, run by Mike O'Brien then Roger Arnold and Stephen Greenwood they had a great battle didn't they and Mike Wales and John Roberts really been the star of the show with their battle changing positions multiple times we had Cliff Gray 
uh, Donald Laird and the problems for John Slack. 